Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now, I was, um, I was sent a comment by one of our viewers, and they asked if we could deal with shadows and figures and manifestations of the demonic in a home. And what I want to share is, this is going to be real brief, but all I can ask you is to do an inventory. What are you watching on TV? What are you wearing on your body? Now, not all jewelry is demonic. I'm asking you for specifics. What are you wearing on your body? What are you uh, using for music? What are you listening to? What kind of words are they saying? What is the general message that's being flooded in the atmosphere of your home? What kind of language is being spoken in your home? Is it a real language or is it uh, a bunch of cuss words? Anger, temper tantrums, disrespect, abuse, molestation. What kind of language is being used in your home? Expressions. Okay. And the other thing is what types of venues do you consult with? See, the reason I'm asking this, I'm putting all these together because demons are very, very legalistic, more so than we Christians sometimes. When a demon knows, and I mean they know their rights, when a demon knows it has the right to be somewhere, all the hissy fits in the world won't get rid of them. You have to remove the legal right. And I know I've told this before. Example. You have an abusive mate, whatever. You move all their stuff out the house. They break in after they've gotten their own place. You call the cops. What's the one of the one of the first things they're going to ask you? Is there anything in this house that belongs to them? I ask you, is there anything in your house that belongs to the demonic, to the occult, to witchcraft, any and all of the above, anything in your house. Now, when a policeman hears the answer yes, they can't do anything. They can't arrest that person because they have a right to be in there. But when the policeman hears, no, there's nothing in here that belongs, book them, get them out of here. Now they can lock him up. They can eject him from your house and lock that bad boy up. You can do the same. But you must make sure you do not have anything that gives a demon a legal right to be in your house. Now that's just a quick word of warning. You got manifestations, sounds, bumps in the night. You got little boogeymen, little weird manifestations of shadows and shapes. Hmm? Yeah, you got little cold spots in a room where it's just icy cold while the rest of the room is warm. Your dog going off, hair standing up in the back of its head, barking like crazy, and you feel the evil and he's barking at the same direction where the evil is. 
something pinning you down in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Some people refer to it as uh, sleep paralysis. I don't. I call it a demonic attack. That's all it is. Now, there are times demons attack, and they don't have a right, and they know it. But they're betting on the fact that you don't know it, and you don't know how to get rid of them. And sadly, a lot of you don't. Well, here is your heads up. Repeat these words. I rebuke you in the name of of Jesus okay get out of my house in the name of Jesus I cast you out of my house my my room my property and never return in the name of Jesus that's your starting point now you have to be in Christ and you have to have done everything you can to remove their right to be there. Now God can enable you to get rid of them but they can come back if they have a right to come back. So you have to ask God, Lord, show me, especially if you're not sure, show me what right they have to be here? What do I have? What am I doing to give them a right to keep coming back? God will. God bless you.